Welcomen da good dag alla samman. I'm uh, just working on a few things now. I wanted to do a quick video just as an intro. So I'm working on a lot of different stuff about uh, Seider and Galder and I'm going to be releasing a whole lot of videos about those, but I'm going to make a quick video here just to explain the difference between those for the beginners. Um because those are the two types of magic from the North pagan world that most of you have probably heard of. And uh, yeah, this one, so this one's just for the beginners that have maybe not heard so much much about those too. Um, so these two are absolutely not the only types of magic that the pre-Christian Norse used. Uh, they had different types like rune magic, they have different methods of uh, divination, they had spiritual journeys, um, walking into the realm of the dead. Uh, later on in time they had magical staves and and some things that are not even magic at all, like different um, you know meditation practices and herbal remedies. Uh, but Saedr and Galdr are the most famous things that we associate with the Viking Age. Um, so here's the difference. Uh, basically, Galdr is simply just a chant or incantation. That's all. Uh, directly translated from Old Norse, it meant uh, chant or yell or crow. Um, so because of that translation, some experts suggest that the uh, incantation should be kind of recited in a chirping or caw or crow-like method. Uh, <laughs> But uh, most experts say um, that it was probably recited in the same way as the Sami Yoi. Um, so some records from later on in time, actually, in the Scandinavian folk magic tradition, say that it can either be uh, sung out loud, really, you know, loud and demanding, or it can be done with, uh, like, a, in a serious way, like with teach clench and, and talking through the teeth like this, like draw clench like that. Um, and uh, most of them were usually in rhyme or in poetic meters called uh, galderlag. Um, so that's galder. Now, the cool thing about Galdr is we have actually tons of written down records of these. Um, here is one from the Poetic Edda poem, uh, Skirnismal. Um, so when the uh, uh, god Freyr, his messenger Skirnir, goes to the giant uh, Gerdr, and uh, he used this Galdr to make her fall in love with Freyr. Uh, another famous one is in the uh, Merseburg Charms, uh, which is one of the oldest ones that we have written, and that's in uh, Old High German. Um, this one is to fix a horse's broken foot. So it doesn't seem as though the exact words or language or even the gods in Galdr uh, incantations were that important at all. Um, I've had people ask me about that, and it, all that was probably not super important because um, we see things like this. This is a uh, incantation found in Norway almost a thousand years later, and it's pretty much identical, but it's just a prayer to Jesus instead of uh, uh, to Odin. So... Um, now, I can't say I believe in these, um, but I have never been riding on a horse and tried to fix its broken leg like that. So if anyone has, you can let me know. Um, but there are many more examples of Galdr that were historically used, and I'll go over these in other videos. But basically, to sum Galdr up, it could be recited on its own to achieve the magical purpose, or it could very often be paired with something else, such as carving runes or perhaps making a herbal potion, and then reciting the Galdr. So that's basically it. Uh, Seidr, that's a whole lot more complicated, and we don't know a lot about it. Um, I've done a few long videos about this and what the sources say. Um, that's in a playlist on my channel, and I'll be doing a lot more, but basically we know a few things. One, uh, the practitioner, who is usually a woman, would work herself up into a trance-like state. Uh, two, uh, some sort of song was sung or, or chanted to call the spirits to the vicinity. Uh, three, uh, drums and rattles were most likely used every time. Uh, four, it always included a staff, um, usually shaped like a distaff, like we see in a lot of archaeological finds. Uh, another is it was always done up high on a platform. 
and it were it was usually traveling women with a team of helpers doing it uh, um, for pay or accommodation at a king or a chieftain's house or, or hall or something like that. And finally, it was considered very, very shameful to do. It was pretty shameful for a woman, but if it was a man doing it, it would be very, very shameful. The word to describe a man doing this was erigi, which is one of the worst insults uh, that existed in the Norse world. So... Usually, Saidr was for divination purposes and to give advice to the customer who you were um, working for, but uh, it also had other purposes, um, such as affecting the weather or causing sickness or even death, uh, taking the shape of an animal, and uh, other things like that. Um, so there is a lot more evidence that we have from different texts and archaeological finds, and uh, it might have been practiced uh, a little bit differently each time, but this list here is all the things that they have in common each time. Uh, we don't know exactly how Saidr was practiced, and anyone that tells you that they do is a liar. I've seen tons of just wannabe gurus talking about Saidr and just making shit up. Um, so yes, of course, you are allowed to have your own theories about Saidr and anything else in the pagan Norse world, but it has to align with the evidence that we have. We can't just go making things up that contradicts the evidence that we have. Um, any theories that we have are great as long as they are in agreement with these things. Um, also, if you have theories about Saidr, please explain how you come up with these, <laughs> how you come up with those theories. Uh, I have a theory about Saidr and how practitioners were able to work themselves up to get in that trance-like state, and uh, I think it's pretty clear that Saidr is an early form of the legends that we hear about later on in time about witches riding on broomsticks. Um, so that video where I explain what I think it is is in the link in the description below if you're interested in seeing that. But this video is finished, it's just an intro on Saidr and Galdr, I'll be making lots more uh, and I'll be releasing them soon. Uh, all the evidence we have, uh, written records, archaeological finds, uh, parallels from later on in time, everything, I'll be, I'll be covering all that. Um, but just, just remember, to sum it up, these were just two practices of magic that the Norse and other Germanic peoples used. Um, there were lots, lots more. Some of them were very crazy and not very believable at all, and some of them are very, very real and undeniable, but um, that's up to you guys. I'm not here to tell you what to believe in. I'm not a practitioner. I'm not a witchcraft practitioner or, or Wicca or, or Vitki or Sorcerer or whatever you want to call it. I'm just a Viking history nerd, and I'm tired of people just making stuff up about our ancestors' spiritual practices. I'm just here to present the evidence, then you guys can do whatever you want with it. Come up with whatever theories you like. Um, so that's about it for this video. Vi ses nästa gång.